Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about how did this boxer, Floyd Mayweather, become one of the richest athletes in the entire world? In 2015, he made far and away the most money out of anybody, and he fought two fights, and he made $300 million, guys. Two fights. $300 million, by far made more than any athlete. Not even close, guys. How did he do it? He's a, he's a boxer, if you don't know. And in America, boxing's not even close to being the most popular sport. In Europe, boxing's not even close to being the most popular sport. In China, same thing. How did this guy, a boxer, become so freaking rich? It's like ridiculous amount of money he, he has. So today we're going to go through five different ways on how he did it. How did he become the richest athlete out there? He's the only one that's in the top five of net worth for athletes who's under the age of 40. It is absolutely amazing. His, his net worth is uh, reported between $400 million and $650 million, guys. And like I said, he made $300 million in 2015 alone. How did he do it? How did he do it? Let's go ahead and get into this, guys. If you enjoy this video today, hit that thumbs up button and leave me a comment. I would love to hear what you guys have to say on this topic. So number one, and this is this is pretty much ju uh, just as important as his boxing and all those kinds of things, guys. This number one thing here. Floyd Mayweather is an individual that created an emotional reaction in people, meaning people that who know who he is generally either hate him or they love him. And this is a very, very powerful money-making opportunity for him because he's in the boxing sphere. And people that hate you, they want to see your butt kicked and get knocked out, especially in boxing, guys. So what he created was this persona, this money persona of him throwing around money everywhere and just living this ridiculous lifestyle and flaunting in everybody's face. And a lot of people just hated him for it. This was phenomenal for him because it just created this opportunity of, of people basically disliking him, knowing who he was and then disliking him and then buying his pay-per-view fights to try to see him get knocked out or, or basically lose to somebody. That's what people tuned in for. And then the people that loved him and loved his persona, they also tuned in just because they wanted to see him win. So that is such a powerful thing, guys. And there's been a ton of other undefeated boxers throughout time who you have no clue who, who these guys are unless you specifically watch boxing. If you're really into boxing, you know who some of these guys are. But there's been so many boxers out there who have been undefeated, who have been great, and no one ever knows who the crap they are because they don't create an emotional reaction in people. They don't get people to hate them. They don't get people to love them. And if you can't get people to hate you or love you, then you're really just a nobody, just another guy fighting out there. So what he did was like genius, genius. And I would actually say a lot more people actually hate him or, or at least hated him back then than, than really liked him. They wanted to see him get knocked out. Those people pay 80, 90, 100 bucks to try to see him lose a fight. And he just never lost, but that's what people would do. So creating an emotional reaction was so powerful and it was the smartest thing he could ever do because then people actually remembered him. Then people actually cared about him enough to actually buy the pay-per-views and try to see him lose and all those kinds of things, guys, which is how he ran up those numbers. Ridiculous. You know, just, just I mean, for the, for the Pacquiao fight alone, there's reported that he made over $200 million for that guy, fight, guys. One fight over $200 million. And, and like I said, two fights in, in 2015, he made $300 million. Those fights each lasted about 60 minutes. So technically, he makes $150 million per hour, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And I know you guys could say, well, he trains and all that stuff. And, then, you know, he doesn't make money off that. Yeah, it's absolutely true. But still, it's just ridiculous to think this guy makes $150 million an hour. That's just, that's just absurd, guys. Okay, so number two, how, how else did he do this here, guys? He always made sure, especially toward the latter part of his career, the last five to ten years, he made sure he fought fighters that had a big, huge followings from other countries. This was another genius decision because if he was fighting just nobodies, then or, or say good fighters, but they don't really have a big following behind them, then the numbers aren't going to really add up at the end of the day. So he saw, he fought a lot of fighters that had huge Latino backgrounds, you know, uh, huge Latino followings, huge Mexican followings, huge followings in Latin America and whatnot. So that way he could come out with this persona, this cocky persona, put that out there. 
he, the people that support that other fighter see this, they begin to hate him and they want to see that other guy knock his ass out and then they go ahead and buy the fight. And this was ingenious, guys. It was absolutely ingenious. So instead of fighting, you know, some American boxers who, who don't really have big followings or some European boxers that didn't have the very big followings, he would fight people that had huge following, guys. People like Oscar De La Hoya, just a ridiculous following, guys. You know, people like Ricky Hatton, who at the, when he fought him, he was undefeated. He was from the United Kingdom. So he had, you know, a huge following or I don't know where he's from. He's from somewhere in Europe, but he had an insanely huge European following, Ricky hat when he fought him so that that fight did amazing numbers pacquiao had an international following that was just amazing if not a, a, the most popular fighter in the united states even maybe even popular than floyd mayweather as far as people liking him so pacquiao had a ridiculous following which made that fight have such ridiculously huge numbers guys so by fighting these fighters who, you know, were just big, basically big names and had a huge following, he was able to make so much more, more money than maybe if he fought a fighter that was maybe quote unquote a little better, but was, didn't have the, quite, the following. Because if they don't have the following behind them, then your numbers aren't going to be nearly as big at the end of the day. So that was another ingenious decision that he made throughout the latter part of his career there. Fight fighters that have huge followings and your numbers are going to add up huge at the end of the day. Number three. This is the boxing part, staying undefeated. By staying undefeated, he could stay king, he could stay super cocky, he could stay, you know, uh, doing the whole persona and whatnot. So by staying undefeated, it gave him this, this type of even bigger type of hatred coming from a lot of people because he was undefeated. And people will say, oh, he just runs around the ring and this and that, and that's how he wins fights and whatnot. It just created the, the whole persona even bigger. So if he had ever lost, I think that would have very much dampened his whole reputation because then he wouldn't have been able able to be quite as cocky and he might have lost some some effect because he's already lost at that point and people would have been like oh he already lost he got you know his butt kicked by so and so but by staying undefeated by never losing a fight he was able to just get cockier and cockier if he wanted to as time went on and more confident and, and throw that you know money thing in everybody's face and whatnot and I'm the best and I'm the greatest ever and people got you know felt some kind of way if he would say oh I'm the greatest fighter ever there's been no one as great as me because people think Muhammad Ali was better or this guy or that guy which made a bunch more hatred come his way which was once again genius because you are creating an emotional reaction in people so staying undefeated was absolutely paramount in his career Career, and it was a huge thing and it brought him in so much money as time went on here guys number four this is crazy Floyd Mayweather didn't have any endorsements he had no endorsements and you would say how does he make that much money and no endorsements well that was another very smart decision the reason being is he never had to put on a front of a certain way of acting. When you're endorsed by companies, you really have to act a certain way. You have to present yourself a certain way. You have to, you have obligations you have to do for whatever company sponsoring you and those kinds of things. So although, yeah, absolutely, you can make millions of dollars from those endorsements as a huge name athlete, you gotta also put on a different type of persona than maybe you wanna put on. He might not have been able to do the kinds of things, say the kinds of things, get the emotional reaction out of people that he wanted to if he was under an umbrella of endorsements, if he was endorsed by Nike or this company or that company because they would have been saying, hey, you know what, you can't say that, you can't act that way, you can't do that or we're gonna, we're gonna drop you as, an, as a company that's endorsing you. So that was a phenomenal thing by him, but I was just saying, you know what, forget that money because the money I'm gonna make from these fights and off building my own brand, which he did the TMT brand and whatnot. And I, you know, no one knows the numbers on that. He could be doing $10 million in revenue. He could be doing $100 million in revenue. No one knows the numbers on that, what that brand brings in, the TMT brand, which he sells clothing and hats and all types of things, you know, that are branded that brand. But who knows how much that brings in? But the bottom line at the end of the day, that those products are a lot more profitable than if he was, say, an athlete for another brand because he's going to get a very, very small percentage if he was an athlete for one of the other big, big brands out there. You know, the Nikes of the world, the Unders Armors of the world, you know, those type of companies 
when he's his own brand, when he's making his own products and whatnot, he's getting so much more profit. Yeah, he's got to pay whoever's you know just tri- distributing it. He's got to pay whoever's running that company because I guarantee you he's not down there every day running the numbers and, oh, we need to ship this much product to this store or whatever. Someone else is probably doing it. So he's got people to pay, but it's still so much pro- more profitable for him than if he was just getting a very, very small slice from, from one of the big brands. So not going into endorsements was just amazing for him. It was It just played out very well. It played out very well. And by staying undefeated, he was able to even build himself up bigger and bigger and act a certain way, do things he, the way he wanted to do them, not the way a brand was telling him to do them. Number five here, guys. In 2007, he started his own promotion company. He left the Bob Arum type promotion company and basically created his own. This made all his fights much more profitable for him because then he could be his own promotion. He could promote his own fights instead of paying someone else to do it, a big a fat fee, and then they take a you know 10% or 20% out of his check or whatever. Now he was able to do it himself and have his own promotion team do it, do it the way he wants to do it, promote the fight the way he wants to do it, and then get more profit at the end of the day. So that was another ingenious decision there. And I I compliment him on that and I compliment the people he surrounded himself with for making all these decisions because through all five of these decisions, guys, is how he made the most money in 2015, no doubt about it. If he would have skipped any of those steps, he would not have made that much money. If he would have skipped two of the steps, he wouldn't even be close to making nearly what kind of money he made throughout his career. But by doing all those five steps, he created just a monster. And now there's talk that he might even make 100 to 200 million if he can put together a fight with Conor McGregor, a boxing match. And I absolutely believe it. It will bring in 100 to 200 million. I wouldn't be surprised if it does bigger numbers than Pacquiao if they can get it together within the next year, which would bump him up that list even more, guys. So it's just insane. So that is how Floyd Mayweather did it. That's how he went from, you know, being a boxer who was just on up and coming to end up being. Uh, you know, a worldwide, uh, I don't even know if he's a worldwide superstar, you know, maybe he is, maybe he's not. I can guarantee you, he's probably not even close to being one of the most popular athletes. And he was still able to accomplish what he accomplished. I can guarantee you Kobe Bryant's more well-known worldwide than him. I can guarantee you LeBron James, all these guys, but yet he... He, he clowned them all as far as the money went because he did this these five steps gear, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed kind of diving deep on it. It's a, it's a person I've always followed throughout of his career. I've always watched his fights, and I've always, always watched him progress. And that's how I ha- kind of have this insight on how he actually did it, how he you know got to those huge numbers, guys. I hope you enjoyed this today. If you've just come across this channel, Please subscribe. I talk personal finance on the channel. We talk business and entrepreneurship. This is actually a business and entrepreneurship type video here, guys. You're going to learn a lot from a guy like Floyd Mayweather, actually. And I also talk the stock market the most and how to be a successful investor. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.